Okay, so we're going to get started on preparing. However, I am feeling really lonely in this kitchen, so I've invited somebody to come and help me. And you'll like him, it's my pastry chef. Come on in, how are you? Come on in, come and show us how it's done. Okay then, so are we ready, chef? sandwich tins beforehand because when you've got flour, egg and everything else on your hands it's, it just doesn't work. So what we do is we get our greaseproof paper or parchment paper somebody calls it, some people call it, take a pencil and I'm going to draw, try and use this, don't want to, just draw around the base and take some scissors and we're going to carefully cut that over there. there Might need to put that on there because it's, uh, it's rolling the other way and goes a bit funny. So, taking your scissors, being very careful not to put your fingers in the way and just cut round your pencil mark and this will be the base for your sandwich tin. Can you think why we do this? Why do you think we put this um, parchment paper at the bottom? That's it, nearly there. Oh, it's a bit, a bit tricky to do. There we go. Don't forget to give the answer to why we do it. Right, I hope you've all got it. So what we do, we put that, so when we put our mixture in our tins, then it doesn't stick, because it's nothing worse than doing a nice sponge cake, and then the mixture sticks to the bottom. But also, to help us along, I'm going to grease the sides of the sandwich tin with some butter, so I can use some of my paper, just take a little bit off, take the butter. Just take a little bit, like this lot, and then we're going to go around the sides of our tin, and this will help the mixture not to stick. And we'll see when it's cooked if this works, won't we? So that's one done. Let's do the other one. Making sure when you get your sandwich tins that they're both the right the same the same size. So these are both seven inches. Also, I'm going to take a little bit of flour. Just put a little bit in each. Just get your flour and just shake it round the sides. And that helps it not to stick as well. So that's that bit done. And we'll do this one. Hope that chef doesn't come back because I'm wearing his hat. He left it behind, you know. There we go. Just going to empty this flour out. Mm -hmm. So there's our tins prepared. Just going to put my paper back in. make it nice and smooth as we're doing it. So, there we go. So let's put them to the side. Make room for other things. So let's have a look. So we're going to cream the butter and the sugar together. So I'm going to get another bowl, put my sugar in, put my butter in. This is why they probably say have softened butter, because this won't be hard to do. If you had like the butter straight from the fridge, I think you'd struggle to cream it up. 
So let's have a look, what does it say? Cream the butter and sugar together until very pale in colour, light in texture and fluffy. Okay, so let's get cream in. surface so if I put the tea towel on here oh that's better gives it a bit more stability now let's keep going okay so this as you can see is nice and fluffy and a nice pale colour that you need some more sauce for this that was quite hard work that was so the next step beat in the whole egg one at a time, adding a tablespoon of flour with each. So I've just whisked my eggs up. So I'm going to pour a bit of egg in, beat it in, and at the same time, I'm going to do a spoonful of flour. You see the mixture? It's turning into a bit of like a cake mixture now, isn't it? Oh, very nice. Look at that. Make sure you get it all in. Right, so I'm going to put the rest of the egg in. Beat that gently because this is quite runny now. Just be careful. Spoonful of flour. this off here look we want to waste any do we there we go let's have a look what's the next step so then it's gently fold in the remaining flour with the metal spoon I'm just going to pop and get a clean spoon together that's it make sure I get all the flour that we need on there you go I'm just folding it, not beating it. Make sure we use it all. There we go. So let's have a look at the next little bit. So we're going to transfer it to the tins and smooth the top with a knife. So this is where we've got our prepared tins. So I'm going to half the mixture into each tin. Just get a spoonful each first and then I'll divide it. Make sure they get the same amount. Looks a bit more than that one. A bit more in that one. I'm going to grab myself a palette knife so I can use all the mixture. Perfect look. That 
we'll see what it takes. I'm just going to roll off. Don't leave none behind then, look. transfer and, it and smooth the top with a knife so I'm not I'm going to try and do it with this see what this is like just smooth it parchment papers moving so just be careful when you do it you can spread it round it moves a little bit don't worry if it does just put your thumb there once you get your mixture all around then you'll be all right okay then so there we go we've got our mixture in our tins so I'm going to take it over to the oven and we're going to put it in the oven so obviously we won't need the oven gloves because we're putting the hot the cold into the hot so open this keeping your face away and these are to be cooked in the centre of the oven. Okay. So it says for 20 to 30 minutes. So I'm going to do this for 30 minutes and we'll check it sort of 10 minutes before the end. So while our cakes are cooking, I'm going to clean down, wash my pots and get all this mess off my body because that man was very, very messy. So while our sponge is cooking, I'm going to whip up some cream. So I've got double cream here. I can get the lid off. I'm going to pour this. You can use whipping cream as well. So I'm going to take my whisk and I'm going to whisk my cream up. Might be a little bit noisy for some, but I've had a go and it, it's not that bad. dairy and dairy does stay in the fridge have we remembered that so our cake has been in the oven for 25 minutes so I'm actually going to switch this off now oh is it switched off it has I'm going to check it so what do we remember what do we say hot stuff guys don't we so we're going to open up our door keeping your face away from the heat all right so let's bring out just bring out one to check put it on there So what we're going to do, we're going to use a skewer, we're going to push it inside the sponge, just makes a little hole but it doesn't matter. Now as you can see, there is no, no gooey bits, no gooey mixture on there, so that tells me that it's cooked. So on our recipe it says to leave them in the tins on the cooling rack for a while. So I'm going to get the other one out, put that there. Enough. We don't need that anymore. There we go. That little bit done. So we're at the final stage of our of our baking. Um, so I've took the sponges out of the tins. The parchment paper I have ripped off. So this is our result of our sponge. Um, following the recipe, it is only a small sponge. If you wanted a bigger one, you can like double your double your mixture, and you'll get a a, a bigger sponge. 
So what I'm going to do with mine, I'm going to put some jam, so I'm going to mix my jam up, put it into the middle, get plenty on. Just evenly spread it all the way around. that one. Then this double cream that we mixed and we put in the fridge. Oh yes, this looks nice. Might not need all this, but we can have some at the side, can't we? Let's get that all around there. Evenly spread it round. There we go. Right, so then take your sponge, let's place it on top of the other one. And there we go, one Victoria sponge. So just to finish it off, we're going to get some icing sugar. So we're going to sieve it. So if there's any lumps in the icing sugar, it will go through the sieve and then it will be nice and smooth. So I'll just put a bit on. Let's put that there. So just gently put it over like that. There we go. There. And there's our finished product. Lovely. Thank you very much for listening and tuning in. And I'll see you next time.